Hey there, everyone. It's Christoph Chu, and I have the privilege and honor today to be with Steve Harney, the founder of KCM, Keeping Current Matters, and David Childers, who also is the vice president of Keeping Current Matters. They're a company I've used for many years now to help me resource and source the data of what's going on in the local Los Angeles or United States real estate market. And Steve himself has been an expert in real estate now for over 25 years. He started a company that had over 500 agents beneath him in his firm. And he's currently been one of the top leaders and experts in the industry in terms of giving us data about what's going on in our marketplace. He's been on CNN, Chicago Tribune, LA Times. He's considered one of the most influential people in our real estate industry. And I wanted him to talk about what's going on in our real estate market. And then David Childers, who is his vice president, is the head of marketing for KCM. And he spent more than 20 years helping the real estate industry keep current uh, which is why it's called Keeping Current Matters, with the information out there. And I'm so honored and privileged to have both of them here because right now I'm getting so many calls from sellers and buyers. Should I sell now? Should I buy now? Are we going to crash? Are there going to be tons of foreclosures? Are prices going to drop? There's so much information out there, but truly I want these two experts in the field to talk about what's going on and share the true data behind the stories and the headlines of what's really going on so you, as a buyer and seller, can be informed and make the right decision for you and your family in these very challenging and unprecedented, time, unprecedented times. Look, this is something that we will all get over. All terrible situations do come to an end. We will truly come out of this better than ever, I believe, in my heart. We just have to get through the next two, three, four, six, eight weeks of the challenges ahead of us, which we will. But as human beings and as a country, we will come out even stronger. So. Steve, uh, thank you for joining us. And David, I appreciate you as well. And I know you guys are swamped with requests for interviews. So I'm really honored that you're willing to share with me and my database about what's going on. So I'll leave it up to you and let's talk about what's going on in the marketplace and what's going on now and how it will potentially affect our real estate marketplace in the US. Well, I wanna make sure that all your listeners understand that we're honored that you ask us to come on because probably in the especially the luxury market, especially luxury, the luxury market in your, your part of the country, you, you're the expert. You might be the expert in the world on luxury real estate. So, Christoph, this is uh, an honor for us to be on this call and, you know, get a chance to share some of our thoughts, you know, with uh, uh, your listeners. So, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, so, is why don't you throw a couple of questions at us that you, you're getting from your clients and Perfect. then we'll see what we can do as far as, you know, try to clarify some, you know, so right maybe. now a, a lot of buyers want to be on pause and on hold and they think the market's going to crash. Uh, they think that foreclosure is going to be rampant across the United States and we're, and they kind of think as our closest memory is 2008, that we're going to be heading back to worse than 2008, but everything I'm reading, I'm studying doesn't really lead to that. So tell me what you think in terms of, Will the U.S. marketplace drop in sales? Will prices drop? And will we see lots of foreclosures? Let's start with that. Okay. So the, the answer to that, the simple answer to that question, this is nothing like 2008. It's not even in the same category whatsoever at all. Uh, I think in 2008, uh, a tornado came through the housing industry and the mortgage industry and wrecked everything. And it took us years to rebuild after that. This is going to be tough for someone in California, but I like to compare this to a snowstorm. Yeah, you know, things are slowing up. We have six feet of snow out there. It's still snowing. We're not exactly sure when the snow is going to stop, but it is going to stop. And then it's going to melt away. We have nothing to rebuild. So I think that what's going to take place is I think that we're in for a little bit of a ride right now because so many people are being, you know, held back from working. But David, you put a slide together just this morning on Goldman Sachs's forecast going forward which is in line with every other forecast we've seen. Why don't you show us that slide? Yeah, and I shared that slide. Thank you for keeping current matters because I shared that slide this morning. Every day I'm trying to share the slides of the real data so that people okay. don't sit in panic and fear and worry about things that they don't even know about. Let's look at the data. Let's look at what the forecasters are saying. Look, things may change, but at least we have some semblance of positivity moving forward. Well, I'm glad that you said things should change because that slide changed from when they did it just a week ago, which yeah, it was the 17th. I, I saw that this morning. I posted it. Sure. I'm like, oh, shoot, that's the 17th. Today's the 25th or whatever day. Yeah. So, David, I'm curious to see what the new slide says. Yeah. So let, let me share this and tell me if, uh, if you guys can see that. I'm sharing the slide now. I can see it. Yes. All right. So this is the updated wow. projection uh, for GDP. And you can see there was updated today. Um, yes. 
And so here in quarter one, Goldman Sachs is saying, hey, we're, we're you know, due to companies being, uh, you know, shut down, uh, shelter in place in some places, social distancing in others, we are seeing an economic slowdown. And it's important that the word, you know, recession is tied to this as well, which the definition of recession is economic slowdown. And so we, we start to see that here. Goldman Sachs is saying with this update, they've revised their previous update that we would see about 24% drop in GDP in the second quarter uh, of this year. And then revised into going into quarter three and quarter four, you can see there 12% and 10% and then on into 2021. So uh, a, a, a projection that forms much more of a V pattern yes. uh, in a drop in, in Q2 and, and back up in Q3. Yeah, because the one I posted this morning was 5% for quarter two drop right. and 3.02% and for quarter one. <laughs> so the, so the drop is significantly stronger, but the increase is significantly greater as well. Mm -hmm. Right. The concept is it's going to be tough right now. You know, we're going to buckle in a little bit for the next couple of months, but we can't panic and your buyers can't panic right. because there's some opportunities out there. The silver lining to everything that's happening, including with the stock market, is they're going to get interest rates, even jumbo rates, at really unbelievable numbers. Now, I know they're, they're very volatile right this week, you know, over, but as they settle out, they're going to get closer to the um, – uh, the 10-year treasury rate, which is a 50-year symbiotic relationship. So I think we're going to see really good rates, and your buyers should not miss out on that. Yeah. I understand that they're worried about the foreclosure side. David, let's just go to a couple of slides for Christoph's audience. You jumped to 15, because when you showed me this, you blew me away. Let me grab that up here real That's quick. the total equity cashed out? Yep, I will pop that in. Yeah, I loved it when here. I saw that last week when we talked on your conference. 35% of the homes in America are owned free and clear. That's amazing. And yeah, it is amazing. And 50%, including that 35%, 50% have uh, over 50% equity. Right. And that's because people learned from the last times. And Thank God. Will take this off and explain that. Yeah, so what we see in this slide is the time leading up to 2008 that you mentioned, Christoph. And what we know is in the year, the three years leading up to 2008, there was $824 billion in cash out refinances done in homes across this country. And those were used for a lot of things to finance life. Really, people at that time were using their homes as ATMs, putting them, putting uh, yeah. you know, assets, repositioning assets into depreciating assets. And, and really thinking it was never going to end. And we certainly know what happened in 2008. Our team, our research team at Keeping Current Matters went back and looked at that as well, the three years leading up to where we are right now. And we can see that a fraction of those dollars have been cashed out uh, as cash out refinances, $232 billion to be exact. Really speaking to the fact that consumers and the way they manage debt in their um, primary residence has changed. Um, and, and we don't have uh, uh, that, that uh, position. And we mentioned before the equity position across the country yeah. tells a very different picture leading us to, to, to really answer that question. What is different today than what was happening in 2008 that really led to, to the downturn in some of the housing issues? Yeah. So 75% so differential. That's a huge differential. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. That's why we have 50% of the houses in this country. It's actually 52.4% have more than 50% equity. Wow. So at the last time that we're part of the reason there was so many foreclosures is the fact that as prices started to drop even a little bit, people were leveraged all the way up to their neck. So all of a sudden they were negative equity where the amount of money they owned in the house was, was more than right. what the house was worth and they walked away. Right. 50% of the houses, over 50% of the houses having such great equity, no one's walking away from all that cash. They're not going to do that. Yep. So that's one principle. The second principle, a lot of the people in 2008 uh, were getting mortgages that probably shouldn't have got mortgages. We are, right. it got really crazy uh, who was able to do that. As a matter of fact, uh, David, jump over to slide 12 where we see the mortgage availability index. Mm -hmm. So in this index, this shows, uh, this is built by the Mortgage Bankers Association. It's the Mortgage Credit Availability Index that Steve mentioned. So the way to think about this, the higher this index is, 
the easier it is to get a loan. So if we look at the, the left-hand side, we see pre-housing bubble, how high this index was. And then as we go to the right, we see up to today. And what we can, can see there just visually is that this, the lending standards that are in place today are nowhere near what they were right. pre-housing bubble. Right. You know, right. really right. back then, yeah. it was hard not to get a mortgage in this country. And through some of a lot of the, lot of the hard lessons that we learned, uh, those standards have been maintained. You can see it coming up slightly, but not anywhere near what we were uh, leading into to the crash. So all those people had crazy mortgages and, you know, the arms and, the, you know, and, you know, the different types of mortgages that required payments, you know, up front. A lot of those people walked away from those mortgages. And again, as David said, we learned our lesson. We've given out a lot less of those. If we look at 2004, even before the housing crash, we can see that, that that number was a little less than 400. Now we're less than 200. It, we still haven't even got back to norm on that. It's still more difficult today to get a mortgage, even though more and more people are getting them, than yes. it was prior to the crash. So we don't have that that ease of mortgage that people are in there that shouldn't have gotten it into. So that's another point where we don't see there's going to be a lot of foreclosures. Uh, another point, David, that we should probably look at is inventory. So I think that slide 13 you put together for us. Uh huh. Yeah. All so right. another key contributing factor that's different today than, than where we were back in, uh, you know, prior to 2008 is the number of homes that are on the market across the country. At that time, there was an average of about 8.2 months of inventory. And to put that into perspective, a balanced market would be six months of inventory. Okay. Below six months, we're looking at a, at a seller's market above um, six months, we're looking at a buyer's market. What we see today, and, and really the, the biggest challenge facing US real estate across the country is a lack of inventory for the number of buyers that want to buy. Yep. And we can see today that we're right at about 3.1 months of inventory, yep. dramatically different than where we went into 2008 from having an oversupply of homes on the market. When you have an oversupply of homes on the market, obviously the seller has to make an adjustment in price in order to meet the limited demand yep. for, for that house. Here we have the exact opposite situation. Yep. The, the buyers lot of still have to be pretty aggressive in purchasing a house because there's so, so little homes available. So we don't see prices dropping. If prices aren't dropping, I don't see the houses going into foreclosure in that situation. I agree. And in our market here, probably America, another thing. Take, excuse me. Go ahead. All right. Another thing I think that we should take into consideration is people say, "Well, prices have been going along so well, you know, maybe there's going to be a correction anyway." So, David, pull up slide eleven and let them go through that. Yeah. So, what this slide is another another great slide that KCM research team pulled up is looking at appreciation in the six years leading to the housing crash and then appreciation six years prior to today. And, and what you can see there, just visually it stands out to you, that appreciation in red leading up to the housing crash was much higher than what it is or what it has been leading up to today. And you can even see the, the largest year uh, in 2017 leading up to today wasn't even as, as, as high as the lowest year uh, leading up to, to the crash. And so being able to look at, even though prices are rising, we're not in an appreciation uh, run like we right. saw going up into 2008. Se seems right. much lower appreciation across the country. And it's interesting in the real world, back in 2007, I remember this so well, I had a listing which you know at that time was 899, which was a starter home not in Beverly Hills, but on the outskirts of, of our area, a two bedroom, 1200 square foot home. And we had 75 offers on that home. I'd never received 75 offers before in my life on one property. And when I was going through all these offers, half of them were zero down, 3% down, no, no skin in the game, as I said. And I've always told clients over the years, look, yes, 10% is okay. But to me, if you can't afford 20% down, don't buy a house. That's always been my advice. And I remember sitting with my wife saying, God, we had 75 offers in this property, half of which we didn't even respond to. The other, we responded to maybe 10 or 15 of them. But I said, and this is way before the, I mean, six, eight months before the crash. I said, this is really a problem. Because I said, if any of these people lose their job, they've got no skin in the game. 
If they lose their job, they're going to just walk away from that house. And that's exactly what exactly. happened. Now, in this time right now, you know, last year, the end of the year was a little bit slow. But this year, January, February, and March, we were seeing 7 to 15, 20% more sales this year than the year prior, which was more than the year prior. So I know the demand is there. Our inventory has been low. Uh, I think right now we're just on a pause with everything. Luckily in our market, we're not seeing a lot of cancellations. We're seeing delays in closings. Yes, of course, because things are slower right now, but people still want to buy. People still, no matter what, have to buy a home and live in a home, whether it's a rental or a purchase, they got to live somewhere. And because of low inventory, because of these amazing rates, um, I, I foresee good strength in the market once we're out of this, whether it's a month or two months or three months. I truly believe this pent-up demand is going to surge. And I'd like to hear more about from you guys what you think about that because I, there's so much doom and gloom out there and all you hear is negative news and this is crashing and this is crashing. I'm trying to be positive about it and I am positive because I see what's really going on. I've been talking to friends all around the world and the markets are pretty strong all across the country with the exception of New York City, which has had is very tied to the stock market and that kind of industry. But so do you tell us a little bit more what you feel about what's going to happen once we're done with this. And I love Steve, what you shared about when this is over those eight points of how the world will go back to normal. I love that. I'd love you to share that. All right. Sure. The, what we're looking at is we're looking at a situation again, unlike 2008, that it took us years to recover from what happened. We have to realize that, Somewhere down the line, whether that be 60 days, 90 days, or 120 days, somewhere in that ballpark, uh, hopefully we have this thing under control that we're heading in a positive direction. I'm not saying it's going to be go away, but it, we're going to have it where we can live and figure out how to treat it. And we're going to, as the Dr. Fauci has been asking us to do, you know, stay home long enough to get that flat neck curve out so we don't put an overabundance on our health workers and in our hospitals. So, but I do think it's still America and America does great things. I mean, just in New York, where I'm from, um, you know, the uh, National Guard and, uh, ran in and just built uh, four different hospitals with a thousand beds in each hospital. All right. Um, you know, because that's what they do. So, you know, some of the fear that's out there, I, I don't think they're fully understanding that, you know, when Americans come together, they, they do great things. And once this thing is over, let's think, just think about it. We're probably going to be a little bit, uh, you know, have a little bit of a cabin fever for oh, just for real. Stuck in the house. <laughs> so we, we, we're going to go to our, the day this is over. Like, remember I said it was a snowstorm and eventually yep. snow will melt. Yep. The day the snow melts, we're going to be, you know, going to a restaurant and we won't even care that we have an hour wait for a table. <laughs> we'll be just happy going to the restaurant. It's so true. We'll have, yeah. You'll have your pay, the parents grabbing their kids and bringing them to an LA Dodger game because why they, because that's what they do. Yeah. You're going to have some parents bringing their kids to the ballet, something that maybe they've been enjoying for the last five years and haven't been able to enjoy in the last 90 days. You're going to have, uh, what, you know, when we get back to work in some places in the country, you can't even go to work. They, they, they're keeping you in your home. We're going to go back into work and we're going to hug people. We didn't even notice before this all happened. <laughs> That's very right. true. And it, it, step by step, we're going to go back to living our lives. Yeah. And that's going to be turned quickly. And the reason I talk about the hotels, I mean, uh, the restaurants, and the hotels, the same situation. The reason I talk about the, the restaurants and, and the ballparks and the ballet, you know, all those people lost their job quickly. I get it. That's part of the reason we're seeing Goldman Sachs saying, hey, this thing's going to go down pretty quick. Yeah. There's so much unemployment. But unlike 2008, where it took us years to rebuild build that, all of those people are going to get their job back instantaneously. Yeah. Every restaurant is going to be packed. The ballpark's going to be packed. That ballet is going to have a long time <laughs> wait for the tickets. <laughs> Movie theaters, they'll be able to, 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 they're going to be so happy that we're there. We're going to put extra butter on our popcorn and not <laughs> worry about the complaint. And I agree with one that. Of those people, each yeah. one of those people, whether it be the person behind the stand, whether it be a flight attendant, because we're getting on planes again, whether it be the person at the ballpark, they're going to greet us with the biggest smile you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. And I've actually been actually searching for uh, flights and hotels for like September, October already, hoping to get some good deals and thought, well, why not, why not book it? You know, we can be hopeful, right? We have to, we have to be hopeful. We have to be active and keep doing as best we can in these times to have a normal semblance of life. Because I agree with you, look, 
I'm in Beverly Hills and I would go out to lunch six, seven days a week, go out to dinner three, four nights a week, parties, like sometimes two, three parties in a night. So there's no, aside from Beverly Hills, New York, Paris, and London, I mean, we're a very social town, which just, you know, the faucet was shut off two weeks ago. It's done. We went to our last dinner at Spago, our last lunch out. I said, this is the last supper for now. And even the restaurateurs and the man were like, what are you talking about? I said, well, as of next week, I'm not coming in anymore for a while. I said, it could be two weeks, but it could be well a month. So I know I've got cabin fever already. I cannot wait to see another human being in person, <laughs> hug someone, uh, go out to lunch, have a cocktail somewhere, just just get back to life. And I and I and look, and, and this is one reality people don't realize. Yes, stock markets are going crazy. Today it went up, thank God, at least this morning. Uh, but money is still there. Money is always there, it just transfers hands. And there are people in this time that are making a fortune in this particular climate. Others are having challenges, but I'm, I'm glad that you believe like I do that we will get through this, I think, stronger than ever with better values than ever moving forward as humanity and as people uh, caring about each other more and life and love and family, the things that are truly important, not the, the quest for, look, in Beverly Hills, the quest has always been for luxury products and goods and expensive houses and fancy jewelry and clothes and all that. But that's just not, it's nice, but it's not what's important. It's not, it's not going to make you happy, right? Well, I am I am looking forward to the day that I can go out to a really nice restaurant again. It kind of made me a little bit happy just so that we, we don't go too far with that. But I agree with you 100%. What this is making us realize is how important, um, how some things that are very important we kind of forgot about in our quest to enjoy day-to-day -day stuff. Yes. Families are being separated and they can't join together. And yeah. the day they can get in a plane and fly across the country and, and hug their grandmother or hug their grandfather. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to those days too. And I agree with you. They're not that far away. Yeah. All right. And uh, I do believe in the country. I do believe in, in um, you know, us as Americans coming together to make sure that whatever the challenges are, we're going to meet those challenges. And I think we're seeing that actually happen day to day now. Yes. We will meet those challenges where humanity is strong. We as Americans are strong and we will get through this. Look, as I've said in my videos the last, you know, couple of weeks, I'm 32 years in the business. I've been through the riots, the floods, the fires, the earthquakes, 9-11. And I remember when they were, and we were in the riots in 1991 in Los Angeles. Here I was, a Korean man, driving down the streets in a Mercedes where buildings were burning like every other building was on fire. Looters were crossing the streets. And here I am, an Asian guy, as a target in the middle of this. I survived that. I survived the earthquakes. I survived everything. Uh, yeah, there's been blips where a month nothing happened or two months nothing happened. But... We get back to life when this is this will be over hopefully sooner than later we will mm -hmm. be resilient so any any last slides you want to share about the economy and real estate or any closing thoughts before we end our time today yeah christoph it's david I, i'd love to hop in here and share with you Please. one slide I on that, that that we just uh, our team just pulled and it's a study that was done by price waterhouse coopers to business owners and you can see the question there it says COVID 19 were to end today, how long would you estimate it would take your company to get back to business as usual? Wow. And wow. just what you and Steve just said, 66% of those businesses said within one month. The other 24%, making 90% total, said between one and three months. Yes. And so that 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 idea of getting out there and the hardest thing that's going to ha going to be true at that time is can you get in a restaurant <laughs> into the game? Can you do what you want to do because everybody else is going to want to do it and, uh, and get back out there and support the people that, that have been hardest hit in this, uh, in this situation. Well, thank God I've got connections and you guys got to come to Beverly Hills. <laughs> we still have our lunch plan. Yeah, I can get yeah. us in. <laughs> okay. Years of connections. I can get us in. All right. Fair enough. I'm looking forward to that, Christoph. I'm looking You're all for looking forward to it. Thank you guys so much for sharing your insight and your wisdom and your professionalism and, keeping people positive in this time and the data. And I'm going to be sharing all of your slides and your PowerPoints and uh, just appreciate all you do for all of us. I've been a member of KCM for a long time and it's truly, particularly in these times that are rough, having information everybody that I can share that's real information, not just headlines, to help people get through their fears, anxiety and stress at this particular time. Because look, housing is one of the most important things. It's our nest, it's our safety, it's our protection. It's also a biggest part of our our equity in our lives, our, our financial strength. So I think people knowing that we have a good positive 
opportunities and positive direction ahead of us is a positive thing for everyone in these challenging times. And I'm truly grateful to both of you and thankful for all of your sharing and your great advice. Thank you, thank you, Christoph. And thank you for all the hard work you do to make sure that your community is well educated and taking the fear out of that and replacing it with good information so that they can truly understand what's taking place. You're, you're a soldier in that war and you've done a phenomenal job. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. And be safe, safety to your family and your friends and everyone around you. And uh, we look forward to celebrating together under much better circumstances, hopefully shorter, sooner, and then later. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, Christoph. Thanks, guys. Thank